What's up? I'm back. It's GA88 here. Uh, back here again with another video. Today, I thought I would mix things up. Uh, instead of doing an M17 related video, uh, why not do an M50 related video? Uh, yeah, um, if you guys have been, uh, you know, at least half decently long subscribers on this channel, you would know that in the past I haven't, I did actually make a video on the M50. Uh, I took that one down since I wasn't, you know, that much of a fan of uh, the video, and I wanted to improve on it. So I guess I kind, I kind of just decided finally, well, why not do? It? I'll just do it again. I got more accessories, and also I have a whole nother mask here uh, to show off. So uh, in this video, I'm showing off uh, just my newer one. I have two kits. I have an a early, I have a mid 2000s issue kit, and I have a uh, this early the 2011 issue kit right here uh so i guess we'll kind of just get into it so um i guess starting off here i'll kind of just go into the history of the m50 a little bit so the history of the m50 starts right around the late 90s uh you see at the time the uh, you know the current issue mask of the u.s army at the time the uh m40 uh that you, you see testing with that mask uh, you know, testing with the mask kind of showed that uh, the mask's over, you know, overall kind of weight, bulkiness, and just the amount of space it took up on the body was quite a large amount, and it was considered quite unsatisfactory that in the productions that you know that that you know the cost of production and, uh, and the, you know just the cost of production, the amount of parts you'd have to make and all that was just a logistical nightmare, um. And the you know the U.S. Army was already looking to replace the M40 just a few years after it was adopted, so uh, they look uh, so they ended up doing uh, deciding to do a weapons trial uh, with a few different uh, you know companies to see uh, what they could come up with for a mask that the you know, the you know the U.S. Army would adopt, and also basically every other branch of the military. Um, now there were a few requirements to, for this test. I'm not going to go too far in depth on those, but there was a few specific requirements that they wanted to, uh, you know, kind of, you know, just a few requirements they wanted out of the manufacturers. Uh, and one of those was making the mask lighter and also making it out of as few parts as possible. Uh, so make a both lighter mask, a, a mask that utilizes less parts. So it's more user friendly to uh, maintain, and also uh, they wanted to experiment with uh, kind of lighter uh, filter assemblies that could po that could seal without, you know, that could seal like as in when you take a canister off, it would automatically seal so that you you know you wouldn't uh, ha so you wouldn't have to hold your breath when uh, you were to change filters, uh, and well, um, a few companies uh, you know were entered entered into this, and only one obviously won the contract, which was Avon Protection. Uh, but the two main ones that I'm really gonna focus on here is Scott Aviation and Avon. So Scott Aviation and Avon had relatively similar designs in a lot of manner, you know, in a lot of ways. They both used panoramic lenses and bayonet filters and the whole drinking assembly and stuff was relatively similar. Uh, but uh, you, you see the Scott GSR is what it's called. Uh, the Scott GSR was considered, uh, you know, not as you know, it just wasn't up to snuff for uh, U.S. requirements. That and the mask was thoroughly garbage. It was just way heavier. Fil the filter stuck uh, stuck out way more. It basically failed every single test. And well, Avon here with their XM50 at the time, uh, which is basically the exact same as an M50. Uh, there's just very very minor differences in uh, like basically materials. Uh, you see the nose cup on the. Uh, XM50 is made out of a clear silicone instead of a black colored silicone and a few things like that uh, You know a few minor color differences, but for the most part the XM50 is basically identical to an M50 uh, But yeah, the M the XM50 was uh, the actual uh, choice uh, with the US Army and it ended up being uh, adopted in 2009 uh, technically the M50 was finalized in like 2005 but the mask was actually adopted in 2009 by uh, the armed forces. Um, now, uh, so yeah, right, so 2009 is when they were adopted. They did see some use in the military, you know, the, like the few branches of the U.S. military before it was adopted. It just, 
wasn't really fully adopted, like actually considered adopted, adopted by uh, U.S. forces up on, un you know, until 2009. There were still field trials and such uh, earlier than 2009, but for the most part, this mask remained completely out of, uh, you know, main issue, uh, you know, until like around 2009, which even then uh, with, you know, rolling out masks, it took another good few years afterwards to, you know, get the required amount of masks to issue a good majority of them to, uh, you know, the, you know, all the units in the military and such. Um... So you really didn't see too many M50s up until like the mid 2010s, really. Um, obviously, because you know it takes time to roll that stuff out, and it wasn't. Up, and then really up until recently, the M40 was still like relatively the main issue mask of the the U.S. Army and such at the uh you know at the time, because again you know supply chain issues basically. Um, now now at this current point in time here in 2022, at the time of recording this video. Uh, these have basically completely uh, replaced the M40 in service. There's basically no branches of the military that use the M40 anymore. It's all the M50 now. Um, but yeah, uh, th this mask, uh, obviously, yeah, it's the current issue mask of all, uh, you know, all branches of the U.S. military right now. And there's obviously a few different variations of the mask, like the M51 for vehicle crewmen and such. But uh, yeah, the M50 uh, was, uh, you know, is now kind of the, you know, main issue mask. Uh, so yeah. Um, now obviously being a, you know, the, uh, current issue mask at the moment, uh, these masks do command quite a price tag. Um, the, this one right here, I actually got for a steal. Uh, I got basically everything in the, uh, that you see in the video here besides the filter carrier, the accessory pouch, uh, for $60 from my local military surplus store. It came with that drinking tube, the manual, the waterproofing bag, the mask, the carrier, uh, not not the uh, accessory pouch. That you know, I actually bought separately from the store. But uh, yeah, I got that that the accessory pouch brand new uh, from the store. But I got that separately than what came with the mask. Uh, but yeah, these do command quite the price. Actually, uh, I got pretty lucky with mine. Typically, these command uh, price up until like up over the two hundred dollar range a lot of the time. Uh, but I got mine relative. I got this one right here relatively cheap, as you can clearly see. So, uh, yeah. I guess I don't. I guess there isn't too much else for me to talk about here. Um, you know, relatively regarding, uh, you know, things related to the mask here. So I guess I'm kind of just gonna go over the accessories. So uh, I guess getting into this, we'll kind of just start off with this right here. We got the canteen adapter. Uh, this is the Avon canteen adapter, as you can see. Cap water canteen. This one's dated March 2011 see it right there just a simple canteen cap that works with the Avon style drinking tube assemblies I uh, got your M1 waterproofing bag here this one's dated February 2011 you can see that barcode's a bit smeared there and then here we got the uh, operators cards which I'll take out of the uh, you know little pouch real quick just so I can show it off since some people probably would be interested but yeah there we go we got uh, the Mask, Joint Service, General pur uh, Purpose Mask, Field M50, and Joint Service, General Purpose Mask, CVC M51. Uh, that's what that stands for, JSGPM, if you uh, didn't know. Uh, but, as you can see here, we got, you know, a diagram of the face piece and all the accessories and then, all you know, all that such. You know, you got you donning the mask and uh, doffing and just, just all that typical stuff that you see with... Uh, the you know m50 it also tells you how to store the accessories which as you can see is store the mask uh face down uh that's the front of the carrier by the way so uh as you as you see it right there so right as you see so as you see the carrier right there that's the front of the carrier you'd store it uh you know face down uh from the opening flap as you can see there with the harness folded over the front of the mask obviously uh for quick for quick downing the mask and then you'd store your operator's cards in your waterproofing bag in a little slit in the side of the carrier, which I'll show that's on the back side of the carrier. Uh, there isn't too much else to talk about here. It's just got some PMCS and, uh, you know, buddy procedures and all that. Just nothing too crazy. I'm just going to pop this back in here and I guess I'll kind of just move on to something else. So putting this back in here, closing it up. We'll move on to, I guess... 
And I went up the filter carrier. I gotta stand up on my chair real quick so I can grab it. All right, so we got our filter carrier right here. This one's your standard foliage green colored one. Uh, you know, your kind of ACU style uh, foliage green. Uh, this, I, I do have a set of early, like very early, like a very early set of accessory pouch and carrier that came with my, my early kit. It's dated 2005. And it's basically the exact same color as the uh, XM50 carriers. It's basically identical to an XM50 carrier. It uses the same materials and everything. It's just made after the XM50 trials. Uh, but yeah, you got uh, this accessory pouch right here, which you use for storing all your accessories like uh, Nax or Atnas or, uh, you know, in your spare filter set. Just that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of just, you know, your typical thing. And then, obviously, back there, we got the here. Oops, I just bumped the hell out of the camera. Sorry about that. Just took you guys on a ride. Alright, I guess I'll grab my carrier now. So, I'll bring my chair forward. Got your carrier here, your standard foliage green carrier. Uh, this one's a bit dirty. I got it this way. Uh, it was clearly used, the mask, when I got it. Uh, I'll get into that in here in a second. But, yeah, you can see the carrier has seen some use. It's got some dirt stains on it and such. Uh, I got some, got your straps back here, your waist strap and your leg strap. As you can see the uh, elastics kind of worn out on the leg, on the leg strap. Uh, this carrier, I think is dated right around 2005. At least that's what it says on the fast X buckles. But yeah, you can see you got your uh, exterior pouch for your uh, tinted outserts or laser outserts. Uh, you got your drainage hole right there. Uh, you got your opening flap, as you can see, with the pull tab. And right here, you got your uh, little pouch right here, which has a little, a smaller pouch right there for storing your operator's cards and waterproofing bag. And then right here, you have a whole uh, Molly, uh, you know, pouch right there for uh, your, storing your accessory pouch, and it basically just clips to your Molly or attaches to your Molly vest, I believe, or something like that. Uh, I'm not too. Uh, you know, educated when it comes to the whole Molly's setup, so I couldn't tell you for sure. You got your uh, little uh, protective sleeve here in the carrier, which just pulls out, and you can roll this up to help uh, further protect uh, the, the mask. The inside of this bag is some, like lined in some sort of like waterproof material. Uh, it, it, it feels like it's coated in some sort of water resistant chemical. I'm not sure what, but you can definitely feel it on this. Uh, the inside of this is kind of a sticky feeling. Uh, well, the exterior of it's kind of just the regular material. I don't know necessarily what they did there. I'm guessing it's coated in some sort of special protective coating or something. Uh, but there isn't much to see inside the carrier. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this on camera, but there is a loop in the bottom of the carrier. I'm just gonna fold this little protective sleeve back in. There we go. But yeah, in the bottom of the carrier, uh, do I have a flashlight? No, I don't. Well, uh, you're gonna have to take my word on it because I don't believe I'm gonna be able to get it on camera. But in this carrier, uh, where is it? There it is. is, it there? Yeah, there it is. Right there, as you can see, there is a little elastic loop in the bottom of the carrier. That is for if you are issued a VPU. If you're issued with a VPU with your M50, that little elastic core, it, that little elastic band there is to stow the VPU in. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it for the carrier. You know, it's a pretty nice carrier. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite carrier designs, honestly. Uh, I mean, I'm not much of a fan of the whole, uh, you know, Velcro and nylon uh, stuff uh, with fast X buckles, but I mean, this is a pretty good carrier. Um, and then obviously, we got our mask here. Uh, this one is a 2011 dated example, as you can see right there. This one is dated March 2011. Uh, it's got the updated self-sealing valves, as you can see. Uh, the self-sealing valves apparently are dated 2010, at least that's what it uh, appears to say right there. Um, on, right here we got our lot number and serial number. This is your lot number, AVO11, you know, for 2011, 15M06. Um, I figured this out. The 15 is your actual like week of assembly for the mask. So this one was made in like early April 2011, like assembled then. And then the M is actually the size. 
So if you had a small face piece, it'd say S right there. If, it, if you have a medium face piece, it says M right there. If it's an L, it'll have L. And then uh, I don't know what the last two digits stand for, but they're there. And then you have your serial number of your mask right here, which as you can see, 1115. So for the year and the week, and then you have your actual serial number right there, 20,726. Uh, I'm pretty sure this resets uh, per year. So uh, this is uh, the amount that they made this year. So this is the 20,726th, um, I believe, medium face piece. It could be for all in general, but I'm pretty sure uh, it's just for like the size. So uh, this is the 20,726th assembled uh, medium face piece of 2011. And then you can see this R010, not sure what that means. Uh, it seems to change by size though, I believe. Uh, but yeah. There isn't too much else to see there. You got a QR code and, um, you know, you got your other side there, which, as you can see, you got the label for the filter ports. You got your you know, other self-sealing valve. You got your drinking tube assembly right there, as you can see. Uh, you got your exhale valve cover, which, if I can take off, I will. Try not to bust the uh, drinking lever there, which it, you actually do have to be careful when you take off this cover. Uh, you have to make sure that you twist that little uh you know lever up like I, I would say like maybe 50 75 degrees or so because if you just try to take it off with it all the way down or all the way up it's going to actually bust the uh, lever off uh because you see that there's a little piece of plastic right there and right there and this will end up pulling up on your drinking lever and if you pull too hard it'll just snap your lever straight off so uh be careful when you're doing that make sure you always push the lever up out of the way so that it doesn't break your uh, drinking lever. Uh, so yeah, you can see your little uh, cover here. Nothing too special. You got your outlet valve right there. Let's see if I can pop this back on here. There we go. It's back on. Push that lever back down. Make sure this gets back in place and then pop that back in. Um, right there you can see the size stamp, medium. You can see an H right there in like a, like red Sharpie. Which is kind of interesting. Uh, there's an issue marking, obviously. Um, yeah, that's kind of neat. Uh, I got your clear ballistic outsert right there, which is just held in by these two little rubber um, inserts, or uh, I don't know what you want to call them, grommets, pins, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you got just some ribbing right there. You have your uh, little uh, indicators for to make sure that your filter is installed. You see there's uh, installed properly. You see there is a little line right there and you just uh, make sure that it lines up with that when you install the filter. So like when you put on your filter, which you do this, and then you just twist it and then it, and it'll snap into place and you just gotta make sure it's lined up like that. And then that means right there, if it's lined up with these two little bars, that means it's disconnected. Um, got your harness right here, which is a very nice head harness. This is probably uh, one of the best, uh, you know, best uh, head harnesses I've ever had uh, comfortability wise uh, I'm not too fond of the design of it like the actual strap design but the actual skull cap of the harness is very very comfortable you got two quick adjust straps here on the bottom you have two uh, you know pre-adjusting straps right here on the sides uh, as you can see they're just the standard Avon style which you kind of just pop this little clip up and then pull it through and push the clip back down and then you have two velcro straps up here on top which is probably my least favorite part about this design. It's kind of, I, I think it's kind of uh, not the greatest design, uh, but I mean, it, it, it's fine. It still serves its function. Uh, I do like how these top straps aren't elasticated, which means that they wear better over time because these top straps typically are the first to wear out when it comes to elasticated head harnesses. Um, you have these two little, uh, little uh, strap, uh, whatever you call them, uh, buckle, whatever assemblies. Uh, that they that the actual straps thread through and these are made out of rubber which is my least favorite part about the entire design of the m50 is that these are relatively thin and could break i could i can like tear off very easily i could see this like over time with these masks aging that these could get brittle and just tear off entirely because of how thin they are um but i mean otherwise this design isn't horrible i guess i could see these tearing off too but uh, the, otherwise, uh, the rest of the mask is designed very well. Oh yeah, by the way, there's a little three-prong assembly right there which you can just take off and uh, you know install a VPU or so something of the sort or a dynamic microphone and such on there. 
or you know just comms lead and such so um, I guess folding over the harness here I'll show you the interior and then wrap up this video because it's getting relatively long so here we got the interior of the M50 as you can see there is a really nice inner face seal in there which is I this meshes with your face very well uh, I mean I'm more of a small myself though this medium fits me fine I have a small face piece uh, you know a small M50 face piece and that fits me perfectly uh, literally it fits me the best out of any mask I've ever worn ever that small face piece and I love it to death um, but this medium face piece still fits me just fine as well you got a sweat drainage hole right there you got your nice chin area which is very nice uh, I have a very like narrow chin and this still fits my chin pretty well even though it's a medium um, you can see the nose cup right here which is made of a black silicone it's very comfortable this one's a medium as you can see um, you got your little drinking tube right there and you have a little indicator right there on the side of the nose cup to tell you if your drinking tube is in the correct position uh, now obviously that should line up with uh, you know the drinking tube should line up with that line there if uh, you have your drinking tube uh, put in the off position which if you turn this lever as you can see it turns it into your mouth uh, there isn't too much else to note in here uh, you have a little deflector built into the nose cup uh, which means this ma the nose cup actually uses no disc valves it actually just uses a special type of uh, deflector system designed by Avon that uh, the nose cup actually has its own deflectors built in so it defogs the lenses and also you know keeps the lenses from fogging back up without actually like using valve discs this whole design was basically invented by Avon uh, with the S6 respirator uh, which is kind of a neat thing to say there but like the S6 nose cup is actually very similar to the uh, design of the Avon M50s it uses the same kind of deflector system on the nose cup and then that little slit there in the top of the nose cup so you can see that this design's been around for quite a while uh, in fact it's been used basically since the late 50s by Brit on British masks uh, yeah but there isn't too much else to note in there you can see them deflectors a bit better there but uh, and then also if you fold that back there you can see the little deflector posts uh, attached to the inlet valves and the mask uh, but yeah that's basically it for the mask and everything uh, so I guess I hope you guys enjoyed I really enjoyed making this video um, I guess if there's anything you want to add in the comments or would just want to ask a question or something uh, go ahead um, and, uh, yeah I guess that's pretty much it for this video uh, I guess stay tuned for some more videos soon and uh, have a nice day